Good evening and a warm welcome to you to this um, low frequency S&P strategy uh, webinar presentation by myself, Charlie Burton, in conjunction with Tickmill. So before I can go into any part of the presentation, then we have to do the usual risk disclaimers. The disclaimers are that the material provided is indeed for information purposes only and should not be considered as advice. The views, information, opinions expressed in the text along, belong solely to the author and not to the author's employer. I'm not employed by Tick Mill, but um, I know what they mean. Organization, committee, or other group or individual or company. Um, high risk warning, CFDs are complex in instruments and come with a high risk of losing money, especially if you don't use stop losses. Um, so 75, 74% of retail investor accounts lose money when trading CFDs with tick mill. That's pretty much standard across the industry. And you should consider whether you understand how CFDs work and whether you can afford to take the high risk of losing your money. So we have to go through risk disclaimers when it comes to um, the markets, because one thing that never ceases to amaze me is uh, just what traders get up to all around the world when it comes to risk. So always good to do that. OK, so a little bit about myself before we get started um, and the trading story actually is not about me. Um, so we're going to tell a, I'm going to start off with a trading story, but just two sentences on myself. Um, my name is Charlie Burton, as I've just said, I've been trading 26 years now. And I uh, professionally manage money as well as my own. So I, I manage a number of uh, funds. And so about uh, five or six, five now, five it is now. And so I've got a reasonable amount of experience in the markets. I've won several trading competitions. Um, I've appeared on the BBC on a couple of occasions and done all the usual sorts of interviews. Okay, that's enough on 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 myself. Let's start off this presentation with a story. And this story really comes to the heart of what we're doing here this evening. So just in this short presentation tonight, I won't keep you um, too long. Um, this presentation, it's short and it's punchy with regards to the data and the the strategy itself, which is really simple. So um, it won't, this won't take too long. You'll be pleased to know. Now, this presentation this evening is giving some parameters of a given strategy, but much like that risk warning that I've just given, one thing that it's really important to, to uh, always remember that whatever the stats are of anything you're using, nothing is 100% guaranteed. Doesn't matter how good your trading strategy may be or your approach or some data that you have, nothing is 100%. So let me tell you a little story here. And some of you, if you've seen me over the last week, I, I did another presentation with Tickmill just last week. I shared this same story. This is about a story going back uh, probably around about 15 years or so ago. I'm excited as well. That's really nice of you to say that, Shashank. So there was a chap called Rich here in the UK and he had he was fairly new to trading and he had a strategy. He was given a strategy that had a 60 percent success rate, um, roughly speaking. Um, and it was on the Dow. There was a specific strategy on the Dow. There were some rules with with the strategy. I think it had at the time something like a 30 point stop loss. Uh, the the trade strategy was executed just at the close um, when this particular strategy um, set up, and you would never do it on a Friday. If it's even if it's set up on a Friday going into a weekend, then um, you wouldn't take it on a Friday because there's always that weekend risk there as well. And it was done on the Dow, like I said. So Rich went off and started trading this strategy. And one of the worst things that happened to him that could have happened was that he went and had, in spite of a 60% success rate, he ended, he actually started out and had 11 wins in a row. So you can imagine. Now, most of us who have been trading a long time, you know, it's, just a, it's just a probability, it's a stat. And we know that if you flip a coin just over 10 times, 
then even if you're flipping a coin, it's unlikely that uh, the coin is going to come out heads and heads, 50% heads, 50% tails. So, but of course, he's relatively new to trading. He very quickly forgot after his 11 wins over here that the strategy's long-term uh, success rate is 60%. Now, Rich got a little bit excited, as you can imagine. So he's had 11 wins on the bounce, and he's decided um, he was trading with a £10,000 account. And this is so typical of what goes on all around the world every day of the year. So Rich decided to load up the account and put another 10,000 in it. So he had 20,000 in his account. Prior to this, he'd been trading um, here in the UK, um, what we call spread betting, and he'd been trading at two pounds per point for every Dow point per point. And at this point, he put another 10K into his account and he decided to, on the net, very next trade after these 11 winners in a row, to go to 20 pounds per point. So massively increased his position size. Not only did he massively increase his position size, his confidence got the better of him because uh, for starters, he took a trade setup, which the rules said, don't take a trade setup on a Friday because you've got weekend risk going into a weekend, just in case anything ever happens over a weekend with, with a tight stop loss like it had. So don't take a trade on a Friday. What did he do? He took a trade on a Friday. What else did he do? The, the strategy had something like a, a 30 point stop loss and he elected to not bother putting a stop loss in. So all of a sudden, he's massively increased his position size, taken a trade on a Friday going into weekend, which is not in the rules. And he's also elected not to use a stop loss because his confidence was running high. And he said, oh, I don't need to have a stop loss. I'm just going to give it a little bit more room to breathe. And anyway, the following Monday, the Dow... Um, came down something like 500 points and um, he didn't have a protective stop loss in play. So anyway, um, the long story short is he got caught on the wrong side of the market, then couldn't bring himself to close the trade. He could have just closed out, taken a loss and gradually his PL was just, I say gradually, he was going down and down and down um, because he couldn't bring himself. He was hoping the the market, the Dow was going to turn back up. So um, in the end, he blew his 20,000 account because he was then trying to revenge trade to make back the loss off that original trade. So just a classic story, really, of the sorts of things that I get told these stories you know, every year. And um, it's so atypical of what can go on out there. And I'm sure some of you will have your own horror stories because most of us who have been trading for any length of time might may well have done when we started. But for me, I always want to make sure that um, anyone that I come into contact with, if they're going to um, trade, then they're trading with responsibility, with risk management, so that they never become a statistic like we like the story of Rich, like I've just shared okay now i've just gone through the uh <laughs> the risk warnings so to speak uh let's get in yes exactly johan yeah uh, yeah um so let's get into the nuts and bolts of this like i said this is quite a a straightforward uh strategy it's very simple and i'll warn you some of you will think this evening you'll be thinking actually no that's way too boring for me and that's fine because it is. That's all this is. This is not going to uh, make you your millions. <laughs> it's a low frequency strategy with low returns. So for many people, they're thinking, oh, no, that's that's too low. And that's fine. I'm just sharing this as a uh, as really some thoughts for many people. Because the one thing, whenever I um, show any type of uh, trading setup, a technical trading setup, is I want people to go away and test it for themselves um, and adapt it, more importantly. So take some of the, the rules and the, the general rules that, I, uh, that I'm going to share this evening, go back and test them. You'll, you'll, 
you might want to test it on different markets you might want to test it on different time frames and um and so you personalize it to your style and um and i'm going to share not only the strategy here this evening but i'm also going to show um a trader that i know uh, what he's done with it because he's personalized it so let's go through this exactly uh, uh, arden yes boring is safe arden said boring, boring is safe for long-term trading account nothing wrong with that exactly um so yeah and the thing is if you have and the other thing i'd always say with boring <laughs> if you've got a boring low frequency strategy that let's say yields 10 percent a year but you've got a few different strategies that might may, may yield 10 percent a year all of a sudden you're starting to get into some pretty decent returns aren't you so this is just one strategy okay uh, let me just check um down the uh the list here just bear with me two seconds okay yes he is here i just remembered someone who said they were going to be here a personal friend of mine and he is here in attendance tonight as well and he's been trading cranky 25 years himself i'm sure so um and there's people with all sorts of experience levels who are here who um who might just be interested in this right let's get on so it's a simple rules-based strategy um it's developed for traders happy with something slow as i've already said however um you can use it in a slightly less slow version which is what i'm going to be showing this evening as well so you can trade it the way that i've had it programmed but you can actually have it programmed or tested or whatever you want to do with it um so that you can get a, maybe a little bit more bang for your bucks so to speak if you go off and back test it so um for me i, I look at the s p with this strategy but again it can be applied to other stock indices now most stock indices as the majority of you are aware they have an upside bias, especially the US indices. They tend to have an upside bias. Of course, they go through bear markets like we saw in 2022. Um, and they have deep pullbacks at times, a bit like they had just this summer from July down into October. But um, they, especially the American markets, like many others, they're predisposed to wanting to go up. Uh, indices, uh, stocks are periodically withdrawn from indices that are underperforming and new stocks are added which are expected to do well so overall if the stock market has an upside bias um, for a strategy like this it's a long only strategy it you, you don't use it for uh you know when a market's going down i've tested this i've tested this very strategy for um bear markets and i've the certainly with the 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 parameters that i've used by all means go and try it but in the main um i've not found it to be successful in downwards trending environments it's not that it won't catch trades of course it will but a lot of downwards trends um they finish quite quickly as well and they can be quite choppy so overall um i've only worked with this um with the s p you could use it on the nasdaq the dow comfortably um and you if you want to try it on other um global indices then you could do such as the australian market um uh, even the london market european DAXs, dax etc etc okay so what we're looking for is a trending market and buying on a pullback it's as simple as that it's, it's such a ridiculously stupid strategy really but um sometimes you know basic strategies or approaches um are fine it won't set the world alight it doesn't even do many trades i think it does on average a handful of trades per year per year it really is something just to put in the back pocket potentially you know like i said at the beginning most people will be like oh no it's it's too slow for me however um, like i said uh, a trader i know has adapted it to trading it off of um six hour charts and i'll six hour time frames and so therefore he does get um 
more trades from it. So um, again, depends on how you want to take it away. I'm always, I always stress whatever I show, take it away and back test it for yourself and adapt it because um, that's what it's all about. Um, okay. So like I've said, it's a low frequency strategy, just a handful of trades per year. Um, its average historical return is around 10% a year. And I'll put a question mark that next to that because actually the, the average historical return has dropped um, this year. It's just dropped um, to about actually 8% actually because it's actually had an underperforming year. It's actually at minus 5% for this year based on the way that I've got it set, okay? But it's a, just a long-term um, strategy. It plods along. It'll never really do upset too much, and but um, but that's what it does. So, but that's the way that I've got it set. You can have it set differently, like uh, the trader I know, and he's actually up 20% with it. So again, depends on the parameters that you want to use with it. And I'll show you some of those tonight. Um, oh, okay. Uh, Jose um, is asking, uh, could you please explain what do you mean develop for traders happy with something slow? You lost internet connection. Um, yeah, it's, I, I think you're, you're probably seeing some of the slides now, or some of the, the lines here, but <clears throat> it's developed to be slow. Like I've said, it's a handful of trades per year. It's not intraday trading. It's not, you know, it's not going to take, you know, a trade a day. It's not even necessarily, it's not even going to take a trade a week. And um, so it's very, very slow. So yes, yeah, very infrequent. So now you can make it more frequent by having it running on um, simultaneous markets. So you can do that and you can go down to smaller timeframes. I've got it um, and had it running and tested on the S&P only and on daily charts only. So you could go to a smaller time frame and have it simultaneously running on other markets. So like one of my traders has done. But anyway, let's move on and we'll go through all of that. Now, again, whenever I go through a strategy um, like tonight, I like to talk to people about the downsides of any given strategy, because I could very easily just, when I put slides together, cherry pick some nice looking um, slides for you, and um, which all look wonderful. And that's what typically goes on um, in presentations, of course. But I have to show you some, some slides of when it works but i also have to show you slides of when it doesn't work so you can see that as well so like i've said because of the low frequency it's peak to peak equity can be long what i mean by that is is that if you take an equity curve that's doing this and this is running on a single market like i've had it running on the s p and um, and so you've got a peak one here and then it goes into a dip because all systematic types of um, trading systems will have um, drawdowns or dips. Sometimes it's just flat. But anyway, so peak to peak. So once it then breaches the peak at one, that could be quite some time at sometimes. So that could take, I don't know, it could take a year, for example. That's what I'm talking about down here. So again, it's slow, it's boring, and for most people, they won't want it. <laughs> but that's what it is. You can make it less boring, you can make it less slow, and you can reduce the peak-to-peak -peak as well by changing some of the rules around. But I'm just showing you how I've had it running. Okay, so let's start getting into the nuts and bolts. So we've got a simple chart here of a daily time frame of the S&P on a CFD here. And I've also in the bottom pa uh, pane, we've just got an RSI indicator. I'm going to go through the settings in a moment. But 
Um, and on the chart here, you can see this yellow line here, and this is a 250-day moving average, simple moving average. So one of the first things, yes, this is swing trading. <laughs> yeah, um, that's what I said at the beginning. Yeah, so this is slow, like I said. It's a few, a handful of trades a year in, in the main on daily charts. If you go to smaller time frames with it, you can do more, but we'll talk about that in a moment. So one of the uh, parameters is the price, the price itself needs to be trading in an in generally in an upwards direction, i.e. it needs to be above the 250 day moving average. Now, you could use a 200 day moving average. Again, you want a longer term moving average, most likely. Some of you might get cute with it and say, well, actually, I'm going to test it with a 21 day moving average or 55. And um, if you use Fibonacci numbers. So anyway, I'm using it in this in this fashion, but you can um, you can use others. So so first things first. Is price above its 250-day moving average? Yes. Then all we're looking for is a pullback in price. If we take this pullback here, for example, and during that pullback, if the RSI indicator goes below a given level, my horizontal red line, I'm going to go through all the settings for this in a moment. So if the RSI dips below that level, it's typically... 30, lots of traders will use 30 as a lower level and 70 as a upper level. Those aren't the levels actually that I use, but um, I'm using here, but um, one of my traders does. And so again, you can play around with these levels, but essentially all we're looking for is a short term, in the short term, the market getting oversold. And when the RSI gets oversold, you would be buying at the close uh, buying at the close and then um, with a stop loss, of course, always use a risk management. So with a given stop loss um, and the stop loss is based on the average true range. I'll go through that in a moment as well. And then the exit is such a simple exit. Again, you could have a variety of different exits you could test, but for pure simplicity, just use an exit of when the RSI then goes back to the other you know, to now be an overbought over here. So once it crosses the the upper red line here, then that's the exit. So somewhere over over here somewhere. So you'd have got in down here in this instance and got out over there. It's that's it in it in its raw self. It, that is it. Of course, there's a a number of parameters to this. You know, what is the stop loss calculation? What is the RSI? What are some of these other levels? So I'll go through those with you. So, um, so you can see on this chart, and we're going to come back to this chart shortly. I'm going to need to go through some of the parameters first of all. But you can see that there's several periods through um, uh, this year. This is a I don't know when this was taken from actually, um, but uh, and down here as well. When and down here where price. Um, got oversold according to the RSI indicator and um, and developed uh, trade signals. Okay, so, but it's not that many. And you'll go through long periods where it won't have any signals at all uh, from March here all the way through until May. Okay, so that's only a couple of months, but there are, there are periods where it can go six months, nine months sometimes on the daily chart without taking a, a single or without giving a single um, signal. Okay, so that's its raw nuts and belt, bolts um, from a visual perspective. We're going to come back to this chart and some others in just a moment, but I need to bed down all of the settings. Like, well, what is the RSI? What is the overbought, overbought level and the oversold level? So um, what are those and what are some of the other rules? So, okay. First things first, um, there's a 200 period SMA, sorry, 250 period SMA. So if price is trading above the 250 SMA um, and then it put, does a pullback and the RSI, which is a four period RSI, gets oversold, 
Um, and again, you can change these values. I have them set at 32 for oversold and 77 for overbought. But you can play around with this. Um, like I said, one of my traders, he's got, I think, 30 and 70 or something like that. So again, you can use whatever you like. Um, so if we get that pullback, so price is in a trend, it does a pullback. The RSI down the bottom gets so goes below. If we put that there, it goes below the, uh, let's call it well, 32 here, but it's whatever, 32, 30, whatever, um, gets oversold. Um, and then all you're looking for is you've got a stop loss down here based on the average true range. And then once uh, price comes back up and closes back above, and, uh, sorry, the RSI closes back above the, uh, the upper value, um, whether it's 70 or 75 or whatever you want to choose, you can back test. Um, then it gives um, an exit signal. Okay. The as far as the stop loss is concerned, um, I use a 30 period ATR on on the daily time frame. Again, you could use a standard setting of like 14, but I use a 30 period um, average true range, and then I use a three times that. So three times the average true range. So the, the period setting for the ATR, so the backward period that the ATR is looking at is 30 prior bars. And then you just, and that will give an average true range. So if you take the average true range of like, let's say the S&P, so let's say the, uh, the S&P's average um, range is, for argument's sake, 50 points. And so if I'm using a, three times the ATR, then uh, therefore my stop at that point is 150 points. Simple. Again, you don't have to use a three three times ATR. All these things can be tested. It's so easy to go and back test um, simple strategies like this these days. And so, um, yeah, and then you can personalize it. Okay, so like I've just said, I use a uh, a three times average true range stop loss. Um, but again, you can use a two times, whatever you want to utilize there. So the dynamic exit, the profit taking, is when the RSI closes on this, on the daily charts above 77. You could change that. You could have it at 70. You could have it uh, like a, I'll show you in a moment. Uh, one of my traders I know, um, he's got it, I'm pretty sure, set at 70. Um, I'll show you in a moment. Um, you could have it set at 75, 80, whatever. Again, it's personalizing it um, to, um, to your own uh, preferences. I've got it based on risking 1% of trading an account per trade um, is how I've done all my testing on it um, based on that. I'm going to show you the test results in just a moment. Obviously, you can risk less than that. I wouldn't recommend going more than that, but you can certainly risk less than that. Do bear in mind, by the way, um, tonight's record uh, session is being recorded. So if you think, oh, God, he's gone through stuff and I've forgotten some of the bits that he's gone through, don't worry, it's being recorded. You can get the recording. OK, so I'm being asked what the average true range is. Essentially, the average true range is looking back. If I take us back to a chart here. So what it does is if we take the hard right, let's let's assume that this bar in the top right hand corner is today. OK. Um, so you're going to look it's going to look back. Well, in this instance, 30 bars. So let's say 30 bars is here. So it's going to take the average range of those last 30 days to give us a number. So that's what the uh, on our in simplistic terms. So that's what it's going to give us. It's going to give us the average range, taking all of those, the different volatility of um, of that entire period to give us an average range. And then once we've got that average range, then we can then say, right, okay, well, I want to have my stop loss. Um, if I get a setup, so let's say, going back to our example back here, as prices come down, so I've got the setup, got the entry is um, signals delivered here, but the stop loss might be, let's say, down here. Okay, based on the um, 
three times the average true range, but you could use two times the average true range as well, whatever. So, um, so it's allowing for the natural volatility within the market and just giving you room to breathe a little bit for your trade. Okay. Now, like I keep on saying, all of these can be adapted to personal preference. So it it really that's what I have to emphasize is go away and play with it for those of you that are going to do that. And I'm going to give you some other thoughts on this in a moment as far as different time frames and markets. But if you go back and um and test it yourself. You can either manually back test it, or you can use this plenty of programs that you could utilize to go back and, and back test something like this. And then you can then adapt it um, to how to to your preferences. And I think that's really important. Now, like I've already just said, one of my traders, he uses multiple markets and a six hour chart. So he's got it set on a six hour time frame, not daily time frame. So just by default, a six hour time frame is going to generate more trading opportunities. Now, you have to be very careful and because some people are thinking, well, what about if I take it down to a five minute chart? Well, it's likely on a five minute chart because of the, na the amount of noise you get once you go down to much smaller time frames that the strategy probably just won't work. Um, but anyway, he uses it on a six hour time frame. Um, so therefore, it does generate him um, generally more signals. It's still not crazy, but it does give him more trades. I'll show you in a minute his um, results. And uh, he also trades it on not just the S&P. The only thing that I have an issue with <laughs> is uh, he's got it on the S&P, he's got it on the NASDAQ, he's got it on the Dow, he's got it on the Australian market. Um, there's a fair bit of correlation going on, positive correlation. So, but I think he risks less than 1% risk per trade. I think he's got it at like maybe half a percent or something like that. But nevertheless, there's still you know, a reasonable amount of correlation. But, you know, he's an experienced trader. He knows what he's doing. So anyway, let's go and have a look. So this is the historical return of, uh, this is a back-tested return over the last 10 years of this strategy. So um and that's based on the strat on the on the settings that I've given you tonight. Now um the historical return coming into this year was actually sitting at 10% per year. This year um or uh, we've gone into yeah coming into this year just over here oh the, it's, it's this period here. Um it's just got a bit it was up this year and then it's just fallen back Basically, the strategy got caught in the summer when the S&P had its pullback from July down into um, October. The, you know, like all strategies, it just went into a drawdown because it got, got caught on, the, on a longer pullback than normally we see. So I'll show you all that in a moment. But anyway, this is the, these are the historicals. It's a real plot. It's only done 298 trades over 10 years. Now, there's something else to mention. I'll go through that in a minute because people might be saying, well, actually, Charlie, that's a reasonable amount. Um, yes, um, but there are trades within a trade. So I'll explain that in a moment. There's only actual general trading opportunities that you won't find those huge numbers. What it might do is take a cluster of trades in a short period when they're setting up. And I'll explain that in a moment. Other than that, the the the... The long time drawdown is quite acceptable given the the risk on this trade per trade, considering it's risking 1% per trade. That's a more than acceptable uh, drawdown. Very low volatility. Sharp ratio is OK. Um, I've talked about that peak to peak stagnation. That's what that is. It's peak to peak. So you'll find times whereby... Um, price make oh, sorry the equity makes a peak here this is in July of 2015 and looks like it took until about July of 2017 before it made a new equity high like I said at the beginning this is a strategy to not go and make you a monthly income or anything like that it's a long-term strategy it's a long-term plodder 
Um, it's not going to set the world alight. It's something to have, you know, if you go off and program it yourself to have running in the background, um, a sort of something you can, yeah, you're not really going to have to get too involved with particularly. Expectancy ratio is decent. It's above 0 0.2. So that's decent as, um, as far as expectancy ratio is concerned as well. So overall, um, it's it's all right. It's got quite a high win rate historically at 68%. But there is a, a caveat with that, that look at the risk to reward. The average loss is 1%. The average win is 0 0.9 with these settings. So the risk to reward is actually slightly inverted for this strategy. But it you know, it is profitable. It's just that because it uses that dynamic exit, if I changed the RSI parameters, then I could um, try and have it run for, you know, a higher win rate. So again, all of those things can be adapted, but it, it just seems to work over you know, a 10 year period here. Okay. Now, this is, um, these, this is the information of this trader I was talking to you about. He's got this trading on a six hour time frame, And he's been trading this since about March of this year. So not a huge amount of time that he's been trading with this. His return um, is 20% um, since March of this year. Um, he's had an 8.7% um, drawdown over this year as well so um a, a fairly manageable <coughs> drawdown running it on six hour time frame his win rate is 62 <coughs> percent excuse my coughing here his risk to reward as you can see he's risking his average risk is 0.8 of one percent his average reward is 1.05 and he's looks like that's an expectancy ratio i think there of 1.31 pretty decent so um, i'm not sure where i've taken the uh, screenshot i'm not 100 sure on that but anyway um so let's go into his settings because he's obviously been doing reasonably well with this this year. It looks like, again, even for his, his peaked in July of this year and it's flattened off since October. I haven't done a, um, a fresh um, update on this. But um, but again, when the stock market was coming down, of course, you know, his, you know, even with his settings, it pulled back a little bit. OK, let's go into. So as you can see here, he's taken the original settings that I've just gone through here this evening and he's adapted it. So he's using a 200 period moving average, still using a four period RSI, but he's now using an RSI oversold level of 20. Remember I had mine at 32. So great. He's completely changed it and he's got an overbought. So an exit level at 70 whereas mine was, what, 77. So completely personalized it. He's using a different average true range because he's looking at a different time frame, just a six-hour chart. So you can see how he's taken the core concepts and, and actually played around with them. So, and that's what, you know, if anyone is looking to do anything with this, that's what I'd encourage you to do. Take the basics from this and then say, okay, I want to I want to look at different time frames, different markets, and look at some of the values like uh, this chap has done, and um, so that you personalize it to you, just like he has personalized it for himself. Okay, so let's go back to the visuals again, because earlier on I went through this very nice example whereby at the close of this bar here the RSI had closed below um, the 30 area, the, the lower oversold level, triggering the, the buy signal right at the close. And then it just took its time, but then it exited, as I said, over here. But it's not always going to be like that. And so let's see if we can find an, a, a slightly different example. So here's an example here whereby I can see that the RSI came below the oversold level here, which was actually all at this point here. However, it then ended up coming lower. So it bounced for one day, then came lower here. So there's one and there's two. And the RSI has then come back down below 
the uh, 30 level again. So here's our point two here. So in fact, it's generated two trades. Like I said earlier on, although overall it's a low frequency um, pattern, when it actually starts taking trades, it can, it didn't hear, and it didn't hear, and it didn't hear. It just would have taken one trade there and one trade here as well. But there are going to be points if price starts chopping its way on a pullback, where it'll take more, it'll get, deliver more than just one buy signal. So you've got one buy signal there. Two days later, you've got another buy signal. Now, you don't have to trade it that way. You could just say, no, I'm only going to take the one buy signal um, and I'll ignore all other buy signals all the time the RSI is below. You could do that. I'm just saying how I have it running and how he has it running there when I've done all that testing on it. So it, and, and you can see it down here as well. The RSI got below the oversold level somewhere over here, I would say bounced a little bit, then came back down. So delivered a, a second buy signal here, bounced again, still hadn't got to the overbought level. So it didn't give the exit. So all you're just sitting in trades. The, the stop loss is down here somewhere. Um, and then it's delivered a third buy signal here. Again, you don't have to do it that way, or you can tailor your risk to allow for all of that. And again, it will all present itself to you in your back testing. You could say, well, actually, I'm only going to look like uh, Stuart does is I'm only going to look for RSI readings of um, lower than 20. So I want this like, like he does. I want my level to be much lower so that it's less likely to generate as many signals. So again, that's where you can play around with it. Anyway, and then over here, then it would have exited somewhere over here. I'm just showing you the realities of something like this. So you could end up Sometimes, yes, you're just going to get, you know, just a singular buy signal and then it goes up and gives you your target. Other times it might give you multiple buy signals, which you could take um, or you just take one and you ignore the other signals and that's it. OK, again, all of that is down to personal uh, taste uh, when it comes back to your back testing of it. Like I can't emphasize enough how important it is to go and back test something like this. All these sorts of simple mechanical type of uh, trading strategies, if you will, are easy to back test. And then you can then personalize them to your own risk parameters, et cetera, et cetera, and your own sort of style of what you want. Like Stuart has got, you know, has got it running in a more frequent way and, and actually is running quite well with it. Um, different people are going to want different things from it. Now, this second chart I'm showing because this was a period in uh, 2022 when the stock market, the S&P, was in a bear market um, through much of 2022. So all of the time it was delivering, the RSI was getting oversold down here, down here, down here, uh, down here. Through all of this, there was no buy signals because... The S&P was below its 250-day moving average. So all the time it's below the 250-day the moving average, there are no buy signals. It's only when the S&P is trading above its 250, or you can use a 200-day moving average, or whatever you want. You can use a 50 period, or like I said earlier on, if you want to have it much tighter. So again, that's um, keeping it out of bear runs. Okay, um, so I wanted to bring up uh, this summer. What what created the? Um, yeah, good question. Um, as far as if you're trading it on a CFD, uh, there would be overnight costs, but I don't think the overnight costs are absolutely are that high that are really going to affect you. So um, so no. Uh, and bear in mind, if you're holding a CFD, then you will receive any dividends that um, that are paid out. So you will receive a little bit of that anyway. So, you know, it offsets a little bit of uh, the dividend payments do offset the, um, the um, any little swap fees that you get. They're not that high, so it's not that. 
Uh, Johan, no, what I said at the beginning, Johan, maybe you missed it, um, that I've back tested it in bear markets and it didn't seem to work in bear markets. So by all means, go and back test it yourself. But um, so, no, I've not I've not got it programmed or I've not I, I've, I've done some back testing on it for bear markets. And based on these settings, if you just reverse these, then it didn't work. You'd have to then create your own settings and see how you get on. So. OK, so um, now moving on to this chart, I think I've answered your question there. So what I want to do is talk about this pullback that we had in the S&P this year, uh, this summer. And so this is a classic example of a, a we've had some nice pullbacks earlier um, in the uh, in the year where, yeah, it delivered a buy signal here. And it delivered some buy signals here, which played out reasonably nicely to the upside uh, not down here because price was below the 200 down there but up here in the in through the summer of this year we just had these prolonged prolonged pullback the irony was i was shorting through this um, but that's for other reasons but as far as this system this this strategy is concerned it it had a buy signal somewhere about there that got stopped out because price carried on coming lower. So it got stopped out. Then it delivered another one somewhere here and then another one here. So you can see that, oh, OK, it had a number of stop outs through that period. Then it had um, another buy signal here. The RSI didn't get above um, uh, the upper level, the overbought level to deliver the uh, the exit signal. So that one just rolled over, got stopped out. Then it had some some other buy signals through this. Um, uh, now, uh, the lower entries did go and hit target. So some of the higher tar uh, entries, which started kicking in up here, got stopped out because it still went lower. But certainly there was an, e there was an en entry down here on this big red bar and um, price did go up from there and... Um, hit its target it was unfortunate some of these entries back here because they were quite they were all right but the rsi never quite got to that overbought level just missed out so it was actually doing all right so it was a bit unlucky the system here was a bit unlucky in the middle of the summer there but nevertheless that was just a period which created a drawdown like i said at the beginning of today's presentation I'm not going to sit here and show you all the all the nice pretty stuff. I'm going to show you when something doesn't work because there's all whatever the strategy is you ever look at, there's always going to be periods where it's going to go into drawdown. So and that's what happened to it um, through the summer. And then but then as we got into oh, if I turn that off, as we got into October. Not down here, didn't develop any buy signals there because price was below the 250 day. But over here, it did develop a buy signal here. Um, it didn't get stopped out. The stop loss must have been just a little bit lower. Um, and I'll show you the trade on the, on the system that I, I've got. Um, and it exited, of course, over here. So, you know, it had, it did have an exit there. Um, but nevertheless, um, that period there from sort of August and September um, was a low losing period for it. So it just um, uh, brought the stats down for it overall because it ended up taking um, a few trades through that whole period. So was, now if you didn't take every one of the trades setups, if you just took one and until that gets stopped out, then you might take another one. Fine. But um, and you might have fared better but again that comes down to personal choice so if i actually go look now so just think of this period here this little pull as price came down here this red bar which developed the uh, the signal down here and then the the up move that we saw coming into um through october so if i now go to the next chart um this is where it Went below the 250-day moving average down here, so no signals down there. But over here, there was a signal, and it didn't get stopped out with the ATR stop loss that it had, and it just had a small gain there. So just an example of um, – I've got another example um, of you know, 
actual signals as they came in and what it did um, once the RSI went um, above uh, the overbought level. And there's another example here, similar sort of thing. There's your 250 period moving average there. Um, it's got the signals come in and then the exits over there. So there's plenty um, of these sort of signals that are just going to work and they're going to be fine. And in the main, it really is just a plodder of a strategy. Most of the time, um, it it will have losing trades, but it's quite um, it's quite good at plodding along. Like I've said, overall, your you know it has a, a greater than sixty percent win rate. Um, so it does have its losses. It's just that like like all losses, they they tend to come in clusters. So um, overall, long term win rate is about is up is comfortably over sixty percent. But again. You can fine tune this like Stuart um, and taking it down to a smaller time frame, change the settings around, do whatever you want to do with it to tailor it to your um, to how you might think. Actually, I could use this in a slightly different way with different settings and um, and then you've got something personalized. OK. So. Like I said, because it's fairly straightforward, there's a few rules, but once you've got the rules, which you've got, um, it's easy to back test. You can play around with the settings and I would urge you to play around with the settings and personalize it. I've only looked at, like I've said, those daily charts, but like I've said, Stuart um, is doing it on a six hour time frame, and who's to say you couldn't do it on a, I don't know, an eight hour time frame or certainly on different markets as well and playing around with the settings so personalize it to yourself like i've said i don't think it will make you rich um stuart's done all right with it i must admit over the past um what's that seven eight months um but he's doing it in a different way um, um but it is a long-term plodder so like i said at the beginning of the presentation this evening um most people probably won't be interested in it but some people might say, do you know what? I'll go and have a play with that and I'll see what I can do with it. And that, if that's the case, then I've done my job in presenting something to make some people go off and have a play with it. And maybe a few of you will decide once you've gone and tailored it to your own parameters to actually go and trade with it. Okay, any questions here at this stage? It took me a little bit longer to go through that this evening than I thought. I thought we were going to be all over in about 35 minutes, but um, it's um, it's amazing how sometimes how long it does take to to go through something. So at the moment, um, I'm just waiting to see if we've got any questions. And uh, because on the, uh, the Zoom software here, I can't see when anyone's typing. So I'm just having to <laughs> assume that there might be some comments or whatever coming through. So there are. So uh, Gustavo, all good, very simple. Yep, good stuff. Uh, does it apply on Forex? Um, again, you could tr you could test it one day, uh, one dial. Um, I've only done limited testing on it. Um, in my limited testing, uh, I it didn't seem to like it was going to work. But I only tested it on like one Forex pair. Um, I I genuinely think it's better to markets which trend so you could uh look at some forex pairs that you have you know that do have great trends but um in the main i think it works quite well with stock markets because they are predisposed to going up apart from when they go into bear markets and that and there are settings for avoiding of course that as we've just gone through but um but don't let me put you off by all means try it on other markets you could try it on commodities as well if you wanted to but um um uh, i think you could probably do enough there's enough there with a couple of stock markets and that'll probably be enough for you anyway thanks johan uh arden enjoyed this great to be reminded that trading can be simple um okay thank you very much that's very very kind of you uh what leverage do you use yeah uh, Mikhail. Um, 
it's not about the leverage per se. Um, it's about how much are you risking of your account balance. So if you've got ten thousand dollars in your in your account balance, like I said earlier on, I was testing it with risking what was it one percent. So one percent per trade on a ten thousand account balance. So that's what you calculate it on. So you use like a just use a you know a position size calculator. Most brokers will give you that, or you can get them online. And so what you'll do is you'll say, right, this uh, position, it needs a 75 point stop loss. I want to risk, let's say, half a percent per trade on it. And then it will calculate what that position size therefore comes out at. So then it might say, OK, it's a it's a two lot trade. For argument's sake, I'm just making that up. So it's not really about how much leverage because it's your percentage at risk on your account, which is the important stuff. That's what keeps you safe. So um hope that answers your question. Excuse for my excuse me for my croaky voice today. I've been in London today, so I've been talking all day. So um yeah, you could use a stochastic, yeah, do the same job. Um, yeah, exactly. If you use a short term stochastic, Daniel, so um, for example, you could use, yeah, you could use a four. Okay. So stochastic settings are, are slightly different because there's, uh, there's three inputs values, but um, like four, three, and three might be it, when you put, uh, input a stochastic into your charts, um, it would give you a similar, it wouldn't be exactly the same, but it'd be similar. So yeah, you could use it with a stochastic indicator. Um, it's, it's doing the same type of job, an oversold, overbought type indicator. So absolutely, you could do that. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, Marcel. With 1% risk, what is your preferred and achievable reward percentage? What I need to now do is just take you back into the presentation. And I do appreciate that there's, even though it's a simple strategy, there's a lot that I'm going through because I have gone through this. So um, let me take you back to, if you remember the back, uh, 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 Stuart's, um, Stuart's settings. Like I said earlier on, he's risking an average of 0 0.8 of 1% per trade, and his average reward is 1.05 with a 62% historical success rate. So again, it's going to, depending on the settings that you want to play around with, then it will give you different risk rewards. Remember, like I said at the time, um, this one, the back test on the daily charts or, uh, with those settings that I've shown tonight actually gives an inverted risk reward. It gave a long term average loss of 1% and an average uh, gain of 0.9. But of course, it's got a nearly 70% success rate, which is still delivering uh, an annual, a given annualized return there. So, um, but you can change that very easy just by changing the parameters. So, how do you go about getting? Uh, a higher um, average win relative to average loss. Well, um, you can only take settings where, for example, you use the RSI level below 20. So only take setups when the RSI goes below 20. And then, you know, if you're using 20 and let's say 70 up here or even 77, then it's going to be looking for the RSI to get further up. And therefore, naturally, your risk to reward is going to be higher. Also, your ATR setting, remember your stop loss. You can you can play around with the ATR. I just had it at what? Three times the average, the average true range. But you could say, well, what about if I have the stop loss at 2.5? Again, you'd be tweaking the risk to reward there which might give you a better risk reward. So again, play around with those settings um, to personalize it. Yeah. That's no problem. Glad, I'm glad you asked, Marcel, because if you 
didn't ask, someone else would be thinking it. <laughs> because, you know, I, it is a simple strategy, but it's there's still a lot, there's still a number of different settings. And so it's good to go through, back through some of the settings and some of the questions. So the questions around some of those settings. So yeah, good. Okay, well, I think that's about us. I'm not seeing any other questions coming through. Um, so, um, I think, thank you, Kelly. That's very kind of you. Uh, I think we'll call it an evening or a morning, depending on where you are in the world. And thanks for coming along and having a listening in. And uh, do check us out at Tickmill. There's plenty of presentations at Tickmill that both myself and other traders deliver for Tickmill as well. So um, um, by all means, check out other presentations that they do um, over there at Tickmill. And they're a very good broker. I'm sure many of you do trade with them. Um, would you suggest an entry like this after pin, boys? pin bars? Yes, Daniel, personalize it. Yeah, by all means, you could. One of my other traders that I know does indeed do do not quite that. He doesn't use pin bars, but he uses a different type of candlestick formation. So he uses all those parameters, but then requires a certain type of candlestick as the final entry criteria. So yeah, by all means. Yeah. Good stuff. Well, um, no doubt I'll be doing some other webinars for Tickmill in the not too distant future do check out um yeah it looks like i'll be doing some market analysis um on cnbc for them as well perhaps um so look out for that next year take care for now trade safely out there always watch your risk management that's the best the best advice i can ever get ever give take care for now <laughs>